di saya gitu. Kedengeran Pak? Oh kedengeran suara saya. Oke. Okay. Okay. Suara sayang belum saya kapan? <laughs> Oke okay, Pak. Oke. Okay. Tekan jangan lupa open cam ya. Ready Pak Butuh? Hmm? Sudah ready? Ready dong. <laughs> Sebentar nih saya dismiss dulu. Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, let's start for today meeting. Good morning and nice to see you all again, guys, uh, in this Sunday morning. As usual, in the in the Gita Ika lecturer, we will meet with a co-speaker, another school speaker, and of course with extraordinary material, and hopefully and can broaden our horizon. For today meeting, we will meet with Dr. Putu Hari Gunawan. He is a lecturer in Telkom University and also deputy chairperson of Human Centric Engineering Research Center in Telkom University. For today meetings, uh, as you can see in the screen, uh, Pak Putu will inform us about SC unit uh, with uh, the title of this presentation is computational of biomedical signal and this application. Okay, Pak Putu, maybe again, okay, let's one second uh, stop the okay. screen. Okay, yeah, thank you, Pak Dana. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, today, um, I will present um, maybe actually it's um, our research center topics. Okay. So today we talk about the computational of biomedical signal and its applications. So any, is it clear my voice? Is it clear? Oh, yeah. wait a minute. Okay. Uh, can you see the this slide clearly? It is uh, large enough. About the slide. Hello. About uh, the slide. Uh, you can see. It's not shown can, can on the screen. The I will show a slideshow first. Um, is it okay or no? No. Oh no. Okay. How about this one? Okay. Or maybe you can send me the material, and I will have to go to you for you. Uh, oh. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. I guess I can. Um, oh, wait a minute. I'll send you the the, the slide, Padana. Okay, Pak Buto. Still waiting. Oh, yeah, yeah, this one. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, okay. So, okay. So maybe. Um, I I need first. Oh, uh, where send this one? So it's a little bit um higher. Okay, so I I will speak from this side. Okay, so so this one. Um, so actually maybe all some of you uh, know me. So uh, my name is Butari Gunawan, and I'm a lecturer and researcher from School of Computing uh, Informatics. And now I'm a member of Humic Research Center. And um, actually, my research area is in applied mathematics, numerical method in PDE, uh, high per performance computing, soft computing, um, such as machine learning and its applications. So uh, today, so um, I would like to um, talk about um, how uh, the biomedical signal and how we process that signal okay into um, several uh, applications in the artificial intelligence for instance and actually we um, I will give you some uh, informations or um, just about some example in the arrhythmia detection so since that this um, um, this um, uh, problems from the uh, uh, from our hearts, okay. So then, how we detect um, 
some anomaly or um, some irregular or unnormal um, the beat of uh, our hertz. Okay, so now we talk about the arithmetic maybe later, and then at last. Um, I would like to introduce uh, our research center Humix. So, uh, what is uh, uh, research center Humix, and what is the importance of this research center for um, students? And we also actually um, uh, will explain um, just a little bit about uh, what our products in the research center. So, so. Um, Okay, so now um, actually um, I, I, I need to give you some uh, background for for these uh, presentations actually. So here we go. Um, okay, so um, this one. Okay, so from this figure. So I, I found this figure from the the paper of um, from diagnostic to treatment. So uh, what we know that um, the technology is. Uh, very fast developing right now okay so several um devices uh devices can you find in the healthcare and and what we have here for instance that um how the clinical uh, procedure okay so involves some technology there for instance that uh, they're using a wi-fi they're using smart smartphone they are using any technology, computer and etc. Okay, so the computer itself now is look like a doctor, look like the assistant of doctor. So the doctor uh, actually um, need to examine or need to investigate what is the um, what a problem for the patients. Okay, so however, if you if you add some technology inside of the clinical procedure, so then it will help doctor, of course, and also um, this will provide some um, easier, some easier, um, some um, maybe maybe new technique. Okay, so how to find what the disease, uh, what the problem that the patients uh, uh, got. So, for instance, in this figure, we can see that we have. Uh, um, right now, we have a two um, two area for the uh, healthcare problem. In, in 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 the one side that we talk about the patient friendly diagnosis. So so the technology use any they use any technology. Okay, so for instance, the technology to uh, check the electrical uh, wearable or wireless uh, signal uh, readout. So how they use that something like this. Okay, so this stuff. So they use this stuff. They're using to diagnosis. Okay, the diagnosis patients. They want to know uh, where the problems. So what are the problems and how actually they treat the problem. For instance, that they can detect cancer. For instance, so what cancer and where the cancer. So the cancer problem is very difficult when the doctor. Um, want to see where the location of, of the uh, cancer, they need to open your body, okay? But however, the procedure to open the body is, uh, is not easy at all, okay? So it will be difficult. So doctor need, um, need to study more about where the locations of the cancer inside our body. So that's the problem. So they didn't know, okay, until, okay, until they've, they use any uh, technology. For instance, they use um, they use the X-ray method, okay. And even if they use X-ray, the X-ray uh, indeed they didn't give any um, a clear informations. For instance, is it in the um, the information that about the cancer? For instance, is it the cancer or is it only uh, uh, something like um, uh, another? Uh, another disease, another disease, but um, not in the cancer. So actually, that's a very uh, difficult. Okay, so so that's why. Yeah. Sorry, interrupting. Uh, okay. Do you see the slide or this here for me? Oh, so, uh, wait a minute. Oh, okay. So now I see the slide. Okay. Just just uh, inform me to move to next slide and so on. Uh, and okay, okay. So I will inform to you guys. 
for uh, if any question you can write in the chat box don't forget to write your name and student id and continue with the question and yeah. in the uh, question answering session i will read it and uh, dr putu will answer the question okay yeah i love to, I to someone maybe ask online directly live <laughs> instead of yeah give a chat okay okay so please next padana Thank you, Padanang, for your help. <laughs> okay, next, maybe for the first uh, figures. Yeah, in this one. Okay, so back to this one. So the technology help uh, doctors, okay, to give any um, any information about, for instance, the locations, what the kind of um, for instance, about the problems, okay, and, and etc. So, and the other side, we have also a te technology, another technology that we can use for the treatment, okay? So that's uh, after, maybe after surgery procedure or after any treatments from the doctor, you can use any uh, devices or technology that can treat uh, the patients, okay, with a doctor. Okay, for instance, that how they uh, give a, a signal for for the for, for the broken hands, for instance, or how they monitoring about the um, the glucose, uh, or maybe about the about the uh, 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 the wand, so something like that. So the technology itself um, very uh, important right now and fast developing so if you interest with this uh, research area uh, of course that uh, they have uh, any opportunity a big opportunity to uh, to this uh, to this research okay so uh, please next <laughs> okay so so now um, we need to uh, create maybe uh, very small problems, okay. A uh, very small um, uh, tools that are very important here, okay, in our research. So we call it is electrocardiogram, okay. So or maybe uh, known as a uh, ECG, okay. So what is this? So this tools, this scan um, is a heart scan, okay. This is tools that heart scan is a basic investigation to help diagnose if there are any potential problems with your heart functions okay so for instance the heart itself so the heart is very important in our body so heart can give any signal okay can give any signal if you have a problem with your heart okay so the test is for anyone who experiences for instance irregular habits if you if you feel that um your heart a bit of fast or slow then you need to to check okay, you need to check for instance if you um if you walk and compare with if you if you run maybe and after run then you check your uh, heartbeat of course that your heartbeat will be fast okay so if yeah if if you are in uh, maybe in the normal conditions but your heartbeat um running fast so maybe they have a problem with your heart okay so then you need to uh to to have a test okay to the test use use the electrodiagram um and you you, you need to visit uh, your uh, doctor okay for uh for for more examinations and uh, another irregular heart but also the shortness of breath okay as you expert yourself for instance you are difficult to breathe so maybe they have a problem with your lung or maybe your heart so then you need to check okay or significantly high blood pressure if you have a very high blood pressure so then you need to also check about the um uh, what a problem with your body okay so the here so the tool ecg ecg in this house so it's completely safe and pain free why since that they don't need to put anything inside of your body okay so they they only uh, put 
um, samples uh, on on your skins, okay, on your skin, and then um, they can detect actually what the um, what the um, the the um, uh, the the hertz um, the hertz of uh, characteristic of your hertz, okay, and then they can find uh, also about the signal here, okay, so how the, the your signals uh, presents okay, in this in this area so it also it involves attaching a number of uh, sticky electrodes okay so we call the sticky for instance this one uh, oh, okay on that one so the blue one on the patients uh, 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 both the patients you can see that that that's the um, the number of, of electrode okay and also uh, they can use on your arms, uh, the sensor on the small sensor on your arm, legs, or chest area. So something like that. Uh, please next. Okay, so now um, I need to talk about uh, one uh, problem with your uh, maybe come uh, with your hurt in your hurt. It is called the irregular heart base. So it is called the arrhythmia. Okay. So uh, could you please back? So the arrhythmia itself. So a heart arrhythmia or arrhythmia. Okay. So it is it, it is it read arrhythmia. Okay. It's an irregular heart base. Okay. So the heart rhythms problems. Okay. So for instance, that if you um if you on the um. Uh, during your study, for instance, and suddenly you feel that your heart rhythms um, getting uh, uh, getting faster or getting slower, then so that means you have an arrhythmia. Okay, arrhythmia. So the arrhythmia itself is occur when the electrical signal that coordinate the heart beats don't work properly. Okay, so since that actually our body we have a signal and we have a hertz as the uh, pumping our blood okay so when they, they didn't coordinate um oh, where well they the coordinates between the electrical signal and the heart but uh, don't work properly then you have a arrhythmia okay so the fault signaling causes the heart to beat too fast or this is called the tachycardia and too slow and this is called the bradycardia. And the both fast and the slow, it is also called the irregular link. Okay. So since that um, um, arrhythmia, it's, uh, why this arrhythmia is a uh, very uh, important. So because the arrhythmia is, um, um, it, it, I don't call this is the disease, but this is the problem of our body that it can occur uh, suddenly, okay? So that you need, uh, we need to uh, uh, make attention with these uh, problems. Okay. So the heart arrhythmia may feel like a fluttering. Okay, fluttering. Um, bahasa Indonesia nya berdebar. Okay, fluttering or racing heart and many be harmless. Maybe someone, if you, if you feel that, um, 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 if you feel that your hearts are fluttering, that means um, at 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 the it, in normal positions, for instance, so that's maybe the heart arrhythmia. However, some heart arrhythmia may cause uh, bother sounds, okay, and sometimes even light threatening. So be careful about that. So if you, if, uh, if you don't care about this problem uh, in your body, so arrhythmia, so they can affect uh, uh, affect your uh, another body, for instance, your brain, okay, and then it's also a light threatening, okay and sign and symptoms so that's the that's the um uh, uh you, that, that's why you need to uh take attention with your heart okay okay please next part dana so so how the the symptoms of the uh, arrhythmia so the heart arrhythmia may not cause any sign or symptoms a doctor might notice the irregular heartbeats when assigning you to another reasons, okay? So in general, sign and symptoms of arrhythmias may be includes a flutter, okay? Fluttering in, in the chest, okay? 
So berdebar di dada, for instance, that you have a difficulty to uh, breathing, okay? Susah nafas, okay? So that may be the symptom of the arrhythmias. Or racing heartbeat, okay? Racing heartbeat or a slow heartbeat. Chest pain, okay? For instance, dada sakit, okay? The shortness of breath, so terengah-engah gitu ya. So that be may be a problem of arrhythmia. Another as symptoms may be include anxiety, fatigue, okay, uh, lightheadedness, dizziness, yeah, swelling. So if you feel that you are very swelling, so uh, maybe the arrhythmia, so the fainting, syncope, and etc. So we can see here. So this is the the signal of our heart. So this one the example of the normal heartbeat, okay. So this is the normal. Sorry, this is not the heat. Okay, but this is heart, it's a heartbeat. Okay, and this one, for instance, uh, example of the irregular heartbeat. So we can see that they have uh, anomalies here. So for instance, they have a long, um, uh, long distance between, between, um, uh, between the one signal to another signal, or the amplitude. We say the amplitude in in the calculus okay so we have a problem in here so we call this one um uh, this is not a problem but this is the anomaly okay anomaly um uh, event so then we call it is the irregular heartbeat okay so uh, please next padana okay so so the hertz or cardiovascular signal so they provide some information actually from our heart. So we have here, so we have a notation here. So I will not talk about um, in detail about what is the P, what is a R, what is the Q, S, and T, so that you need to, to read uh, some more paper about it. And, and, and we, just, um, we just notice about this, okay? So if uh, we have, a, when, when we have a normal, okay, so this is the normal, uh, signs rhythm for instance so so the normal something like this we can investigate what a p where's the position of q and what the position of r and s and t for instance so this one okay so this is the normal one okay so this is the normal one and we have uh, another sample for instance that the uh, sample of um, uh, another it, this is particular on etc so this is a uh, uh, Presimeter of rhythms, for instance, they have a different uh, different style of the um, of the signal. Okay, so what we can see here, the signals show something like this. We this one for these problems can see that this is not in the horizontal. Okay, so they um in in they decline here. So we can find that this is decline. In this one, so we have a. The, in the normal heartbeat, we can see that the signal is in the um, in in the perfect horizontal lines. Okay. Meanwhile, for this one problem, we have see that this is decline. Okay. So maybe they have a uh, something like the symptoms or there's uh, something like the problem inside of this one. And how about the the green one? So the green one also has a uh, um, we can see the anomaly something like this. They increase uh, sometime, for instance, this one, okay, and the green line. So they increase, um, they increase in, in, in several points, in 200, uh, sorry, in 2000s, in the 2000s, you can see the 1000 in the green line. So the 1000, they have a, a little bit anomaly like that. Or on the left, in the yellow one, so the yellow one also have a, we have the distance between uh, between um, between peak they have a, a distance okay so for instance the T so maybe the the the, the, the distance between s to T is large okay uh, larger than the uh, normal okay the normal signs so so that actually we can observe we can observe from the um, the ECG signal, okay, so from the ECG, we can observe that um, several uh, sample um, for the heartbeats, they have a different, um, uh, maybe we can see that this one, uh, from this one, we can observe that the uh, um, uh, arrhythmia, 
arrhythmia axis. Okay, so then we need to detect. Okay, we need to detect. So which one um, it is normal or they may be uh, got the arrhythmia in 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 in, in their body. Okay. Uh, next part, then. Okay. <coughs> so, so we already we already talked about um, the signal actually the signal. So we have the raw ECG signal, and and how we need to process okay so this signal. So this signal we need to create or we need to find something like the characteristics of the characteristic of the signal. Okay, so then we need to um, to join um, or to process with something like we call the signal processing. So this signal processing, there are several steps in signal processing. Okay, first we call the noising. We uh, and then uh, this is just example. Okay, so this is the example of um, a signal processing from the paper of. Uh, Deep learning approach of for ECG based heartbeat classifications by uh, Sam Sanino and uh, De Pietro, okay, in 2018. So they use the signal processing. The, this uh, signal processing they have uh, four steps, okay, to go um, um, the classifications uh, signal. For instance, that we first that the noisings, okay. They use a baseline removing. They use a power line removing, for instance, here. And in the peak detections, they use the P wave detections, T wave detections. Also, we have a P T wave. So, uh, can you go back, uh, Padana? <laughs> can you go back? So, what a P T? So, uh, back uh, this one. So, we we see here that the P we have the P wave, T wave. Okay, so we have the R. To R wave, okay. Okay, can you next banana? Sorry. Okay. And and also that we can see that we have need to pick detections, okay? So we need to detect where the, the pick, okay, the P uh, P detection for this and the, the red one here. This is the red. There are a red something like um beside of the, the blue pick, okay. And the T wave, T wave, the location at the right hand side of the the highest peak, okay. So you can see uh, there is um, uh, there is um, uh, there is a red uh, red uh, wave, okay, on the right side of the the blue the, the the highest blue one, and the R peak, okay. So okay, sorry, I I need to move this one. Oh, why I don't? Okay, and we have a R peak uh, detections, okay, and after you uh, detect the peaks then you need to create a segmentation okay so the segmentation that you need to cut okay to cut several uh, segment of uh, one wave okay so you need to uh, create one uh, wave something like this the complete with the p uh, r and t okay with a complete this one so actually, after this one, we, we have a segmentation, something like bit one, bit two, and until bit n, for instance, and any several bits. And after segmentations, we move to the um, temporal feature extractions, for instance. Here, uh, we need to investigate um, about the feature, about the, the feature itself, it, it is called the characteristics, okay? We need to investigate about the characteristic of the wave, so if this wave, um, uh, how the characteristic of the normal wave, how the characteristic of abnormal wave and etc. And then finally, you will have the two classifications. It is called the normal and the abnormal. OK, so the, this one, the abnormal one, it is called the arrhythmia. OK, so something like this. OK, please next, Padana. So. So after you you find that um, you, you you have a data okay so actually you create data so the data of a normal signal and the abnormal signal then what we need to do of course that you are in informatics that you know that if you have a data for the two classes that you need to learning algorithms so there are, there are several most popular algorithms employed for arrhythmia detections and you can found in any 
any um, any literatures, okay? For instance, they, they can support vector machines or SVM, artificial neural networks, linear discriminant, reservoir computings, uh, logistic regressions, deep convolutional neural networks, but the majority, they use the deep learning, okay? So they use deep learning to, to detect either um, either the um, uh, they need to to find the model okay so they define the model what the model of the normal uh, heartbeats and what the model of the normal of the um, arrhythmia or abnormal heartbeats okay so they have some architecture also for instance this one from the paper of uh, Yelderman so they have a uh, some um, uh, some um, what we call here uh, uh, some configurations of the uh, uh, 16 layer deep uh, CNN networks, for instance, or in the paper of uh, Sanino, they uh, they use um, uh, they use uh, some hidden layer here, okay, and they uh, they use to detect of the uh, arrhythmia, okay. So this one they using the deep learning approach, okay. So so this one. Um, actually, um, uh, all of you, I think they, they uh, actually you have already learned about the machine learning and this machine learning that we can apply this machine learning actually um, directly directly to this problem. OK, how to detect um, about the um, arrhythmia. OK, so so next. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to to raise hand or if you if you if you have uh, any want to write right 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 now <laughs> even that you you need to forget about um, what your questions okay so next um so after you have the model you have a data first you have a data and you have a model okay you have a data you have a model and uh, sorry you have a pre-processing a signal processing and you have a data, you have a, a learning then. So what next? OK, so next that we can create, a, it is called the clinical scenario. OK, so the clinical scenario itself, um, uh, for instance, that uh, we can, um, so for instance, the patients, OK, so the patients, they have a handphone, OK, the patients, they have a handphones and they maybe have a uh, uh, SCG device. Okay, so when they sleep, for instance, they use the SCG uh, 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 device. And if the SCG device um, uh, connect to the uh, mobile applications, okay, so the mobile detect any anomalies, then this mobile, okay, this mobile will. Um, Will transfer will transfer um, the problem into the remote monitoring center. Okay, for instance, at the hospital. Okay, so they, the, in the hospital they provide, for instance, a remote monitoring center. So they need to um, they need to investigate if there are anomaly or abnormal heartbeats in, in in your body at home. Okay, and after. After that, the physicians or the clinicians, uh, this the clinicians can um, uh, learn about uh, your um, uh, your your signal, and then and then if they have uh, any uh, abnormal or anomaly in your signal, so then actually the clinical or the doctor will send you a message, okay, to to you, uh, and then you reset in your mobile applications, okay. So something like this. So this is the scenario that we um, uh, actually uh, we also develop this one. So actually this one is uh, from from the um, from this paper. But actually this is the same idea that we have to create in our research center. So we we, we need to create um, this uh, some kind of application in Indonesia. So actually we have uh, uh, we have some projects for this one. So we um, collaborations. We, we have a collaborations with uh, several um, um, hospitals in Bandung, 
and we need to create um, uh, this um, applications uh, as soon as possible. Okay. Clinical scenario is a very uh, needed and, and very important for um, uh, for the patients. They can uh, detect any time. Okay, uh, what happened with their body? And actually, the the problem is that uh, focus on the arrhythmia, uh, arrhythmia detections. Okay. Uh, next, Padana. Padana, can you please? Okay. So, so we know that um, there are several mob mobile health devices that have been exist, and um for instance that we have the allowable sensor okay sensor for us okay and we have the armband okay so something like this so the armband they can detect um about uh about also your hertz okay uh your pressure okay and we have the spine uh goma manometer we have a finger band we have a worst band or and etc okay and we have the patch okay and we have the uh, wireless recorder sensitivity okay so this is the wireless uh, recorder for your habits and also we have a chest belt and etc okay so this is all this technology okay so this is all the technology of products uh using the mobile uh, mobile hubs okay so they can transfer information about your hearts and uh if they have uh, any um, any anomalies uh, with your hearts, so they, they they can give us suggestions. But indeed, uh, this uh, device only give uh, only give you some uh, signal. Okay. However, uh, you still need um, visit your doctor. Okay, to consult about the about uh, about the signal. Okay, so about uh, what the signal that you receive from your body. Okay, so you need uh, you still keep need to. Uh, focus on that. Okay, so we have a uh, uh, one video about um, about the ECG. Okay, so in Intercom University. So please play, Padana. Hope the the voice uh, we can heard about the voice. Actually, you need to share sound. Actually, you need to share sound, Padana. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Okay.
Okay, so thank you. So there's some video. So actually, I couldn't hear Padana. <laughs> I couldn't hear the the voice, but but actually, that's not important since they're only music. So um, okay, so there's some video uh, from our RC. Okay, so uh, Dr. Satria Mandala as uh, our director here. So he uh, creates some uh, detections, RNA uh, detections, and uh, he. Um, um, uh, he has uh, some uh, products for uh, for this uh, uh, for this project, and also uh, we have uh, uh, support from the our lecture to um, uh, to to produce uh, this uh, arithmetic. Okay, um, Padana, can you share again? Okay. Next, Padana. Okay, next, um, I need to uh, share with you about our uh, research center. Okay, so what we uh, actually, uh, what is our research center? So, and what is, um, uh, what we are doing in our research center actually? And what our missions, what our visions and uh, what our contributions for the uh, lecturer, for the uh, students, actually. Okay, we will talk about that later. Okay, uh, please next, Padana. So, research center human engineering, okay, studies the design, the developments, and deployment of multidisciplinary engineering technology, such as computing, electric, or electronics, robotics, and also mechanical and biomedical engineering. So here, those for the improvement of human health and well-being. Okay, so the our the, the our focus. So the our focus is for to improve of a human health and well-being, and we use some um, multidisciplinary engineering technology. Okay, so this is not for informatics. We also uh, open for the electronics, robotics, and biomedical engineering to to create, um, uh, to, to improve uh, uh, human health. Okay, next, Padana. So, so here are the members. So we have a uh, associate um, a professor, Dr. Satya Mandala as a director for uh, this uh, human uh, center engineering. And um, uh, I am as the vice director of uh, uh, human engineering. And also we have two staffs here. So we have a Maya and we have last three. And then uh, we are uh, our, our office in the uh, F building or Gedung F. Okay, Gedung F, the Gedung F. So near the context. <laughs> so, and we have also another internal member such as Ledia, Ibu Ledia. Fami Santi, so the doctor candidate, she now um, um, uh, she now joined the doctoral school at the uh, ITB, and also we have the Estananto, uh, the doctor candidate also, and we have the Muhammad Habubari uh, from the uh, uh, electric electrical engineering uh, school. So uh, here the internal member, um, and also we have a uh, please next Padana. We have another member, okay, so we have the full member actually. So the member from the our, um, several from uh, our, uh, our, our, our staff or our uh, faculty. For instance, we have uh, Professor Dr. Adi Bijaya as our um, rector join also in this um, uh, Humix member. And also we have uh, several uh, lecturers from Telkom University from uh, informatics, uh, from uh, electronic engineering or industrial uh, engineering. Okay, next, Padana. And we also join, uh, we also have a external member from the medical faculty. So for instance, we have a, a Rizky A.A. Samsonarno uh, doctor, MKS, PhD from the uh, medical uh, faculty, medical faculty in UNPAD, Universitas Pajajaran, and also we have a uh, Dr. Miftah 
Pramudio, uh, here specialist uh, jantung, specialist of heart, and from the faculty, uh, the medical faculty in Universitas Pajajaran. Okay, so they uh, they both uh, join us, uh, join our research center to um, 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 to to create some research uh, regarding about the the arrhythmia or um, or any um, or any uh, research uh, including in medical uh, in medical area. So next. So but our focus in the medical engineering. So this is not the. So uh, here actually this is actually um, this is actually our um, our uh, our target. Okay, for the 2023. So um, we don't need to, uh, to 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 talk about this uh, in <laughs> in detail. Uh, sorry, Pak Danang, can you next? Okay, so here the uh, our visions. So um, actually, we we start from uh, 2020 and 2020, and now we have already joined this um, uh, research. Uh, from uh, three years, okay. Uh, uh, sorry, two years in 2022. So our our target in 2023. So we have a target uh, here. So the targets are actually uh, to be uh, to become an excellent research center in the field of engineering to improve the human health and proper. Even that 2023 is close enough, okay. <laughs> okay, next. <coughs> Next, Pak Dana. Pak Dana, next, please. In my mental, it's already changed to Mission Humic. Oh, oh, really? Oh, hmm. so, so mine is not. Oh, okay, so it's already. Okay, so our missions, we have uh, several missions here, four missions. <laughs> So becoming the science and technology excellence center in the field of embedded sensor system to support biomedical applications based on the Internet of Things. So actually, um, uh, actually, uh, this the Internet of Things uh, uh, is uh, our side research, but um, but now we focus on the data from the Internet of of Things. Okay, uh, instead of to create a some applications in the IoT and become the science and technology excellence center on development remote health monitoring system and becoming the data the science and technology excellence center on big data analytics and the last becoming the science technology excellence center on health development of information and cognition technology or ICT so so both are, um, so uh, we have a uh, uh, actually, uh, when we talk about the uh, uh, arrhythmia, so we, we talk about how the ECG itself to uh, from the sensor, and we have the remote health monitoring. So we have the remote how to get the data from 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 the patients, and we have the big data analytics here. We have to to need to um, uh, to preprocessing and how to handling. Uh, big data, so so that's the, our future. Maybe next, uh, maybe for next four uh, four years from right now. So now we we want to develop to the big data analytics. And the last one, we need to use the ICT. For instance, we have the mobile applications. We have the applications for to detect uh, how the arrhythmia and how the uh, doctor or the hospital uh, responds for our um, for our detection. So actually, we 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 include the AI here. So so the AI, how we include the machine learnings uh, in our technology. Okay. Next, Padana. So we still have a time, Padana. <laughs> okay. So here there is activity. So uh, I, I need to skip this one. Padana, next, please. Hmm. So already next. Okay, so 
Next. Yes. Okay. Next, next, again. <laughs> next again. This is our target. Yeah. Uh, next again. So, okay. So we have okay. the uh, research portfolio. So we have uh, several external funding. So from 2020, so we have uh, uh, several funding here. So the grant um, is uh, about 240 million uh, rupiah. Okay. So oh, we have uh, also this one, the prototype detector added uh, Mia 3 channel. Uh, we have a uh, 300,000 uh, rupiah for the funding. Next, Pak Dana. So, okay, so also in 22 and 21, we have a uh, several uh, funding uh, uh, to our research center. Okay, next, Pak Dana. <coughs> next, Pak Dana. Okay, next again. <laughs> Okay, so we have a uh, collaborations. Okay, so so we have a uh, collaborations with several uh, university from from abroad and from uh, national. So we have uh, from the IT, uh, ITB uh, from Unpad, Horishima, uh, Horishima Brawijaya. Okay, so we have uh, um, oh, we have the University Technology Petronas. We have a uh, University Technology Malaysia. Okay, and and etc. Okay, so. Uh, the Naga National, and we have uh, from the, um, we also uh, 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 create a some collaborations with with the um, industrial partner. So we have uh, Inti and Land. Okay, so we have both these two uh, industrial um, our industrial uh, partners, and we have also uh, with the governments also Badan Litbangkes Kementerian Kesehatan RI also join uh, with our uh, collaboration this one okay next and actually we have a uh, um to create okay we need to create or we want to create the telecom university biomedical research so we actually we involve uh, several faculty here so we have the informatic faculty we have the techno um, electrical engineering faculty we have the school of industrial engineering and also the school of creative industry so uh, recently we um, we only uh, work from these four uh, faculty but also we open form for the uh, another uh, faculty to join with us and actually as uh, also in from from this um, from this um, um uh, from this collaborations we have uh, from this collaboration actually we, we we have several uh program for instance we open uh, actually we open um merdeka belajar or we call the rack here work ready program so for the students for for the students uh, we invite some students to join our research center to to get maybe 20 s uh, 20 credits or atau 20 SKS to join with us and actually we have lab so behind me so behind me we have a lab here so uh, we have a big lab one the big lab and if you interest to join us uh, to um, uh, to join our research center you can join uh, through several schema for instance you have a, a kerja praktek or KP you can join us or you can join um, uh, work ready program or rep so you join uh, research uh, research rep to to join our research so actually we have several uh, students already joined we are uh, right now this semester we have uh, 40 students we uh, we we have a uh, 40 students to join our research okay so uh, right now we don't have any selections so however if if we have a uh, um i hope that there's no any selections right uh, right now so but but if if they have some limitation so maybe we can create um selection but 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 right now so they have they, they know uh, we don't have uh, any uh, selections to join us and also for the faculty for uh untuk dosen so we also open to join so the research um for instance that um the faculty that um um, the faculty that uh, uh, need to join our 
our research so we also open okay so any we, we open for the any faculty that want to join or any uh, docent or any staff that want to join uh, our research center so so we have uh, some benefit okay we have some benefit for the student we have the benefit that the student can join uh, the research they can they they uh, maybe they maybe have a uh, um uh, 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 funding for instance and and also uh, they have a credits and they have uh, actually directly to the final project so your final project will directly um will directly develop from the uh rep. okay so that's the the benefit for the students and the benefit for, for the faculty or docent or staff uh, we can join research collaborations and we can provide um, we can provide any any international collaborations we can provide a paper we can provide any publications and uh, we have uh, also provide for the um, uh, community community service for the our 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 faculty so that's why um, research um, research center it's a uh, very important in 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 the university so since then uh, they uh, gather several uh, research they gather several researchers okay and students uh, to um, to 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 join uh, to join our uh, high impact of our uh, research okay so that's the our goal of the uh, uh, this collaboration research okay next Padena. so maybe it is already more than one hour uh, okay so okay next Padena. so actually yeah actually we have two conference and uh and, and and two editor for the journal so we have two conference and then this conference is uh we um uh we as the um uh also the the organizer for this conference so we have the first international conference of data science and its application the schedule will be on august so next year so we open for the next year if you have a paper so please submit this one <laughs> so if you have a if you want to join this conference you need to submit uh, as soon as possible so we, we open for the the august and 2023 and also we have this uh, conference iccita actually iccita already closed um already closed on this uh, on october on the last october and now we we have uh, we need to review some paper and we start the conference on December okay and we have the um, collaboration with the with the journal in the telecom university journal first we have the collaboration with the Indonesian journal on computing so the status as an editor only an editor and the second one is the journal of computer engineering progress application and technology or cepat and uh, the status as editor so actually we we uh, maybe next year we want to create uh we want to create uh, one uh, international journal as um full of our control okay so maybe please um please stay tuned <laughs> we will um maybe uh we will inform of you as soon as possible if uh if we are ready to to to, to publish uh, our journal Okay, next, Pak Danang. Okay, so now we have uh, some products. So we have uh, from the CNN um, our product. So please, uh, you can watch this uh, uh, video. Kelebihan lain yang dimiliki oleh jam tangan ini adalah sinyal pengguna jam tangan bisa dipantau secara real time dengan aplikasi.
Okay, so we have already. So now uh, this is some video. So this is the video of uh, uh, rhythm. So can you play, Padana? Okay, so here we have a. Uh, oh, okay, oops. Okay, so we have uh, uh, our products. So um, how we can detect actually the um, the heartbeat. For the patients, okay, and we have the live monitoring ECG. So here, for instance, we have a website. Uh, we develop uh, one applications in the website, and then we can uh, monitoring um, um, how the the ECG of a patient. <coughs> okay, so yep, uh, one hour more than five minutes. So actually, um, I think that's all for uh, our um, uh, our presentations for the Humex. Maybe if you have uh, any uh, questions regarding our projects, our products, uh, please don't hesitate to to ask. Okay, any question? Any question, guys? You can uh, resend uh, or also you can chat on the chat box. You can ask me in Bahasa Indonesia. Don't worry about that. <laughs> no? Gak ada pertanyaan? Ada pertanyaan gak?
in the question. If there are no questions, I will not show the link of presency. <laughs> <laughs> Ayo, bertanya. Biar link presensi saya munculin. <laughs> I think there's no more questions about that. So, oh, okay, Stephen. So, right hand. Silakan, Stephen. Thank you for the kesempatannya. Uh, <laughs> uh, nama saya Seven. Saya dari uh, saya dari kelas Eva. Saya dari dari satu tiga nol satu dua satu nol empat satu tujuh. Saya mau nanya. Seven, uh, boleh mau diulang? Sorry. Nama dari berapa? kelas. Uh, nama saya Seven. Nama saya Seven dari kelas Eva puluh lima nol lima. Uh, nim saya satu tiga nol satu dua satu nol empat satu tujuh satu dua satu empat tujuh iya satu dua satu nol empat satu tujuh saya mau tanya uh, seberapa andal ya uh, seberapa andalkah uh, perangkat kabel atau wireless dan uh, by the internet ini yang Bapak uh, currently develop di Yumi uh, bagaimana jika uh, penggunanya itu pergi ke tempat yang enggak ada jaringan gitu atau bagaimana kalau perangkat hmm. ECG ini itu membaca sinyalnya salah hmm. oke okay. bisa dijawab <laughs> Ya, yang pastinya ini um, karena kita memang menggunakan teknologi ya, pastinya teknologi ini butuh internet ya. Jadi kalau nanti tidak ada internet, nanti bikin aplikasi baru lagi ya. Berisi penerawangan gitu ya. Itu mungkin pakai teknologinya beda. Jadi harus pakai tek, pakai internet. Jadi kalau pasiennya tidak ada internet, ya nggak bisa pakai seperti itu ya. Mungkin... Um, Uh, ya ini yang menjadi permasalahan bukan di aplikasinya tapi adalah bagaimana mendistribusikan internet ini di Indonesia ya kan <tuh> ya nanti problemnya ada nanti di um, ya bagaimana akses internet ya sebenarnya ya jadi bukan masalah di aplikasi kalau di aplikasi tentunya pasti harus menggunakan internet perlu mobile ya perlu mobile perlu handphone perlu handphone untuk mentransfer bagaimana sinyal tubuh kita gitu ya. Nah itu uh, terus tadi pertanyaan kedua apa ya saya lupa. Yang kedua, yang kedua apa? Uh, bagaimana jika perangkat ini membaca sinyalnya salah? Oh, oh membaca salah. Ya ini gini. Jadi um, ketika ketika kita Uh, aplikasi ini membaca, dia akan mengirimkan ke dokter ya. Dokter tidak langsung operasi ya. Dokter itu um, akan um, melihat lagi gitu ya, melihat lagi apakah uh, sinyal ini, um, apakah sinyal ini ada anomali atau tidak gitu ya. Nah, um, sinyal ini hanya digunakan, ya, aplikasi ini hanya digunakan untuk memberikan Uh, informasi ke dokter. Nanti dokter ketika dokter tersebut uh, mendapatkan sinyal yang salah, nanti dokter tersebut akan menginfokan ya ke pasien. Oh kamu ada sesuatu nih, segera datang ke saya gitu kan. Nah nanti akan segera ke rumah sakit, lalu akan di eksamen ulang gitu ya. Jadi tidak ada aplikasi yang 100% baik ya atau selalu bisa menemukan uh, atau tidak ada terjadinya error. Pasti saja akan terjadi error. Dan aplikasi ini tidak menyembuhkan ya. Jadi ketika teman-teman menggunakan aplikasi ini, belum tentu teman-teman langsung sembuh. Jadi teman-teman butuh yang namanya um, aplikasi ini butuh untuk koordinasi ya, koordinasi dengan dokter, gitu ya. Jadi semuanya um, uh, apa berakhir di dokter ya, nanti dokter sebagai uh, apa sebagai analisanya. Oke, okay? gitu ya, Stephen ya. Oke okay, pak, uh, saya mau ya. punya satu pertanyaan lagi berkaitan dengan yang tadi. Ya. Uh, mm -hmm. kan 
perangkat-perangkat ini kan menggunakan seperti yang Bapak bilang tadi tuh deep learning, AI, ML gitu mm-hmm. kerjaan. Mm-hmm. Nah, uh, mungkin nggak suatu saat nanti uh, seiring dengan perkembangan teknologi perangkat-perangkat ini tuh akhirnya tidak butuh supervisi dari dokter asli yaitu uh, human uh, ya gitu. Mungkin nggak Pak? Mm-hmm. Ya. Yeah. Mungkin saja ya, mungkin saja ini kedepannya, kedepannya karena um, teman-teman untuk untuk membuat satu teknologi seperti itu sangat susah ya, seperti menirukan manusia itu akan sangat susah. Uh, tapi bisa saja terjadi, bisa saja terjadi karena kita sudah membuktikan ya kan, sekarang udah kita bisa membuktikan bahwa bagaimana teknologi menggantikan kasir ya kan, salah satu aja. Ya, di luar itu ada ada supermarket yang tidak ada kasirnya. Itu sudah bisa menggantikan gitu ya. Bentar lagi Anda bi- bisa digantikan oleh robot gitu kan. Nah, jadi memang kemungkinan akan ada peluang seperti itu ke depannya ya. Tapi kapan? Nah, ini saya nggak bisa jawab gitu ya. Kapannya nggak bisa saya jawab. Itu nanti tergantung dari perkembangan teknologi dan sebagainya. Ya, gitu ya. Oke, baik Pak, terima kasih atas jawabannya. Oke, ya sama-sama, silakan. Ada lagi, ini yang lain pada buka handphone ini kayaknya pasti pasti screenshot ya. <laughs> ini buka kamera untuk screenshot pasti tadi. Tadi ada yang pakai oh. helm ya. <laughs> ada, uh, there there is an, uh, some one question from Muhammad Dafa in the chat box Pak. Oke. Okay. Ya, yeah. yes. Chat, I, I couldn't see the chat. Please, uh, oh, please have to ring. I will. Yeah. We all know that everything that uh, we all know that everything that human made must have its liability, and it is and in this case, which is the technology of human heart, I expect must have the potential for diagnosis of some disease. So the result of disease diagnosis from the technology needs to be reviewed by a potent professional. Who expert on that disease to get the best conclusion of the problem itself. My question mm-hmm. is: It is possible in the future that we are having a condition where we reach the perfection technology, which is all of the diagnosis result are true without need to be reviewed by the professional. Sepertinya hampir sama seperti yang tadi, yeah. Ivan ya. Betul, betul. Ya hampir sama ya. So same as previous um, questions, uh, it is possible. It is possible. But when and how? So we don't know, okay? So it is possible. So uh, I already uh, explained to you one problem, uh, uh, one problem. Kasir, for instance, um, uh, they can replace by robot right now. So you can um, you can buy something, and then uh, you you take uh, you, you you take something uh, product from the the uh, supermarket, and when you check out, then your uh, bank account auto- automatically debit <laughs> and that's that's um, that's possible okay of course okay next pak any other questions no other question maybe uh, okay good any question from the others Okay. Link presensi masih error karena masih belum ada pertanyaan ketiga. <laughs> <Alhamdulillah. laughs> so this student is in the semester six or semester five? Or semester six or five, right? So. I guess, yeah, semester five, I think. Okay. Maybe there are no question. There is no question. Okay, there's no question. <laughs> okay. For the presensi, link presensi is already open, so you can fill it now. And then for Fatutu, thank you for the information, for your presentation. Uh, hopefully. You guys already get uh, some insight from that presentation, and maybe uh, for those who interested to join the Humic Research Center, just uh, check the web 
Well, for a second, okay. I will copy from the file photo. Yeah, please visit our website. They have several information about uh, Humic. Or you can come to uh, Building F, okay, Building F. For more information. Okay. Hey, I already sent in the chat. Just uh, check the chat related to the Humic product. Okay, thank you so much okay. for Putu for your presentation. Uh, Welcome, Pak Denang. Yeah, maybe we can uh, share in another session. So for today meeting, uh, already finished. Uh, happy Friday, guys. And don't forget to pray Suat Jumat for those who, uh, for you, uh, Muslim. Uh, have a nice day. Stay healthy and see you in another another meeting. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for all. See you again.